All right, in this lesson, we're going to take a look at how to create a pretty realistic fire effect for, say, like a torch on a wall. Right. So this lesson is going to cover a few new things. We're going to use a sprite emitter again, but in this case, we're going to actually have two sprite emitters inside of our primary emitter. Okay. And also, we're going to show a little bit of rotation action on it, so to give a little bit more of a random effect. So All it's right. going to look really, really cool when it's done. Well, hopefully. Awesome. So let's go into make sure actor browser... Go back into here, make sure this is selected, come into here, right click, and say add emitter here, ink. So that's added. So we want this to be right on top of the torch. So let's just zoom in here, move this guy to the correct location. So something like that. Now if we go into its properties, go to the emitter, add an emitter, and of course it's going to be a sprite emitter. Okay. Now let's go to the texture browser, and let's select a flame. So if we come down over to here. I'm really, really liking this one. Looks like a flame to me. And again, we have 16 sprites here, if you will. So we're going to need to change the... Wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. One, two... two okay, yeah, it's 16. Yeah, all right. I was just checking. Yeah, I know. So we come down here with it selected. Go down to Texture. And go in here and say Use. So now that's selected. But you know what? Uh, there's something just not yeah, good about that. Yeah, that's really frightening. Yeah, it is frightening. So... Well, let's change the texture use subdivisions to 4 and 4. So something and like that. And 4 times 4 is 24. 16. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Never mind. Yeah. All right. You'll live. Maybe not. All right. So that also looks pretty scary. Yes, it does. I've actually had dreams about stuff like that where I wake up screaming. That's kind of bad. Yeah. You need to get that checked out, man. Yeah, I do. So if we come into rotation, I want these particles to start spinning. So what we're going to do is say spin particles, set that to true. <laughs> I want them to start spinning, so we'll take the spin particle attribute and switch it on. Uh, That's pretty convenient. Yes, it is. So if we come over here, we have spins per second range. So, well, it's exactly what it says. How many spins per second? Well, inside of here, this is going to be a little bit different than what you might expect. One, um, if we set this to one, all right, this is going to probably make a whole lot more sense. If we set this Whoa. to one... Every second, it's going to spin one complete revolution. Oh, okay. So, you know what? I'm saying max is going to be around 0.5. Min is going to be negative 0.5. So we get both angles. Both directions. Both directions, exactly. Oh, that's psychedelic looking. That is psychedelic looking. But that's going to be our flame effect. So we want it to be a little bit psychedelic because it's cool. So let's come <laughs> down to size. Psychedelic flame. <laughs> hey, Ooh. you never know. When am I coming handy? So, start size range. We need this guy to be a lot smaller. So, let's say maybe 20 and 50. Dude, check out the flame. Yeah, so now we have a little bit more, well, a little bit cooler looking. A little low grumbling kind of flame. Now we need to have it start shooting upwards. Yes. So, if we come down to velocity, start velocity, velocity range. Exactly. We need this to be Z. And let's set this to maybe 50. Uh, I'm kind of just grasping for numbers here. So something like that is getting close, but, well, frankly, not quite. It's kind of hitting the ceiling. I don't that want it to hit the ceiling. That looks like crap. You know what? You're absolutely right, so I'm not going to hit you for that one. I'm used to being absolutely right. Thank you. So one thing, just like we did in the last lesson, what we're going to do is come over to size and set up a size scale so that it starts out at its regular size and then starts going down. So let's say add, and relative size is going to be 1 at 0. 1 at 0. It's going to be size of 1 at 0. Oh, okay, so it's going to have a size of 1 when the particles are born. Right. Okay. Thank you for translating for me. Yeah, I'll translate it to something everybody else in the world speaks, <laughs> instead of Joel speak. Yeah, I speak, I speak Greek. <laughs> or uh, something. Or something. Yeah. So relative time is going to be one. Now yeah, check this out. You speak squirrel. I speak squirrel, exactly. Now what I do wrong here? You're probably not awake, so I'm just going to say. That's cool size you, scale thank you. is not set to true. So we need to set this to true, and now he's trailing off into oblivion. Yeah, so, so that's we cool. See, we can see the particles actually getting smaller throughout their life. That's right. But this is still living way too long. So if we go to time, let's set the lifetime range to about 2. Not 22. 2. Yeah, 22 <coughs> might take a little while. 